scholars. That the late Daniel Mutiani Bernard, alias Sniper, was a resident of Likadi village, Igembe South sub-county in Meru County. Until his death, <clears throat> he was a political blogger who criticized the governor of Meru County and her administration. He used his social media platforms to deliver his messages to the governor, the county government of Meru, friends and close relatives of the governor. Mr. Speaker, sir, investigations so far have established that on 2nd December 2023, the deceased was at his home when he received a call from one Vincent Moredi Alaya Supu, who requested to meet with him at Meru Town to attend an alleged meeting with the governor of Meru County to discuss their differences so that the deceased could stop attacking her on social media. Upon arrival at Meru Town, he was abducted and driven to Mutonga River in an area called Chiakariga in Tarakanidhi County. He was killed and his body thrown into River Mutonga at a place called Mutonga Bridge where that body remained for several days undiscovered. Honorable Speaker, sir, his disappearance was reported at Maoa police station by the family members and investigations com commenced immediately. A police file number CR 434-295-2023 was opened. The deceased body was discovered on 6th of December 2023 by a resident of Karikivi area at a place they normally fetch water. That place is called Majarani and she reported the same to the police station. Police officers from Chakariga police station and DCI from Taraka South visited the scene and the unknown deceased body, which had some visible injuries, was retrieved from the river Mutonga on 7th December 2023. The body was taken to Marimanti Level 4 Hospital Mochere, which is in Tarakanidhi County, where the crime happened, for preservation, awaiting identification and postmortem. Right Honorable Speaker, the relatives to the deceased managed to positively identify the said body as that of their kin, Daniel Muthiani Bernard, alias Sniper, on 18th December 2023. And the same day, detectives from the Homicide Investigations Unit in Nairobi took over the investigations um, from the area police and this was because of the highly politicized and sectional um, emotional sentiments that are coming from, were coming at that time and still are coming until now about the commission of that grievous crime against the deceased. And therefore we sent a team of detectives from the homicide unit in Nairobi to take it over from the local police authorities in Meru. Mr. Speaker, sir, a post-mortem was conducted by the chief government pathologist, Dr. Johansen Nodur, on 22nd December 2023. And in his opinion, the cause of death was asphyxia due to ligature strangulation. So, Speaker, sir, investigations have placed five accused persons at the scene of the abduction. Vincent Moredi Kiremi, Kenneth Murangiri Guantai, Christus Manyara Kiambi, Brian Mwenda, and Boniface Kidinji Njuya. 
These five were together with the deceased from Meru town all the way to Mutonga River where the body, uh, where the body was dumped. Further, samples collected during the post-mortem examination and submitted to the government chemist for analysis indicated that it contained acetamifrid and cyhalothrin, which are systemic insecticides. Kenneth Murangiri Wantai was particularly in constant communication with Vincent Moravi Alaya Supu during the time of luring the deceased, the time of abduction, and the time of the disposal of the body. He thereafter met Vincent and the other accused persons at Makutano uh, suburb of Meru County after the execution of the crime. At the close of the investigations, a charge, at least on those five, Investigations have closed on those five, or were closed on those five, and a charge of murder contrary to section 203 as read together with section 204 of the penal code was recommended against Vincent Moravi Alaya Supu, Kenneth Murangiri Wantai, Alias Tali, Christus Kiambi Manyara, Alias Chris. Brian Mwenda, alias Brayo, and Bonfis Kidinji Njiya, alias DJ Kaboom. All the five accused persons were charged before the High Court at Kiambu in High Court Criminal Case E001 of 2024, and they all pleaded not guilty. They are remanded at Nairobi and Kitangela remand prisons. The case was last mentioned on 23rd of April 2024. The hearing of this case has been set. The hearing dates are 24th, 25th, and 26th. And, uh, and then uh, the ruling on bail is uh, set on 16th May 2024, which is next week. Honorable Speaker Sir. Investigations were commenced immediately. The report was made, and from the foregoing, uh, it is not true that there has been delay in investigations. What there has been is that we believe this is a very complicated crime. There could have been other people beyond the five who may have been responsible, but we are yet to establish any direct or circumstantial evidence so that we can open additional uh, charges uh, for uh, any additional people. But for the five, Honorable Speaker, we have a watertight murder case against the five. Mr. Speaker, sir, the government is committed to uphold the freedom of expression and right of information as enshrined in the Constitution. Any journalist or blogger who is intimidated or harassed is encouraged to report to the nearest police station or even to anonymously uh, report uh, 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 so that action can be taken. And uh, I want to assure the House through you, Honorable Speaker, that the government is committed to make sure that our agencies for law enforcement act fairly and enforce the law against all persons without fear or favor, without discrimination, and without any bias. Honorable Speaker, our police officers have been sensitized on upholding the rule of law and constitutionalism, and therefore, nobody should see, feel unsafe, nobody should feel as if they are not protected by the law of Kenya or by the law enforcement 
agencies of our country. I submit, Honorable Speaker. Senator for Meru, you yes, have uh, an opportunity to ask two supplementary questions pursuant to Standing Order 51C7. Uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Speaker, sir. Honorable Speaker, first of all, I want to thank the CS for the comprehensive brief that he has given this House, and also to commend him because he is one of the visible CSEs that we have in this country, and who are doing some good work. So, Mr. Speaker, um, mine was actually to ask the CS whether the investigations have been concluded, he has touched on it, and Mr. Speaker, the reason that why I'm asking so is that this homicide department of our police force has not delved on the sponsors or the people who paint these five who are already in the cells. At no point has there been any link to any other person on this matter. So Mr. Speaker, my first supplementary question is to ask why this investigating body has never touched on the sponsors of this man. Noting that, Mr. Speaker, uh, Sniper is still in mortuary. He has never been buried. The family, the wife, the family, the entire male community is waiting for justice for Sniper. And the whole community has agreed this guy will never be buried until we see justice is being done. If at all we could get that link of who are these sponsors, because the CSE statement was very clear who Honor, Sniper was. Senator for Meru. Uh, it's, let me even ask this only this supplementary, Mr. Let, let Speaker. Me, let, me, let, me, let me guide you. Uh, I'm not going to gag you. Let me guide you. Uh, Honorable Senator Femeru, you are expressing an opinion. And if you look at Standing Order 51B, which gives you the parameters of a question. It says, a question shall not, and it gives many components, and F says, seek an expression of an opinion. The opinion you're giving is that there are sponsors behind this homicide. Uh, now, the space you're trying to get into, you may be called upon to substantiate and I don't think you'll be in a position to do that comfortably. So as you ask the supplementary question, avoid giving your opinion on this matter. Proceed, Honorable Deputy Speaker. Well, Mr. Speaker. Is uh, then to request the CS for speed investigations, whatever bit that is remaining, we request as a mayor community for speed investigation so that can be concluded because he really said that the uh, investigations are still ongoing uh, to, to, to see whether there are other people involved. So I request that maybe expedites more investigations so that uh, this guy can get the justice and then he will be put uh, to rest because still he is in the mortuary, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Sears. Mr. Speaker, sir. Investigations have not concluded. The, the murder file on the deceased is still open, and murder files are never closed, and there is no statute of limitations on murder offenses. And therefore, Mr. So Speaker, I want to assure the House through you that all persons who may have participated in any way, directly or indirectly, in the heinous and cruel murder of the deceased will be held accountable. Mr. Speaker, as the minister responsible for our national security, I want to assure the Senate that the government has full confidence in the work of the directive, uh, Directorate of Criminal Investigations, particularly the inquiry and investigations being carried out by the homicide unit in this particular matter and all the other matters, and therefore there is no cause of alarm. And finally, Honorable Speaker, in the event that any member of the public has any information that can help us link 
anyone that they think there is evidence linking them to this murder, please give us the evidence. But at the moment, we are analyzing data and that uh, we will, I, I take cue from the request by the senator, uh, we'll be asking the agencies to expedite without, of course, interfering with this uh, work that is do, the being done. We want to make sure by the time we take people to court, we will have them convicted. For these five, I see no room for maneuver. They will have to be held accountable because the evidence is watertight.